Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing the maximum carry Kindred jungle build. We're gonna go ahead and mark the enemy jungler right off the bat. So basically Kindred, if you wanna have maximum carry potential, you need to take Conquer or Lethal Tempo. They synergize well with your R because by the time it's finished, even if you have to R super early because they're focusing you, you'll have full stack Conquer or full stack Lethal Tempo allowing you to shred absolutely everybody. Pressy attack Kindred still has its place and is still great. It's more for the early cheese ganks to where if your early ganks don't pan out and you're playing Pressy Attack Kindred, you'll typically find yourself falling off in the later part of the game. Just something to be known. So for our runes, we took Conquer with Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand. They're invading us here, so we just give. Just give it. You don't want to fight it. If they actually start in your jungle, it's bad for them because they take your camps 20% slower than their own. That's how Season 13 works. So there's really no incentive to stay, especially at lower ranks, because you only have one ability to farm with. Oh, look, now you have delayed level two. Now look, you have delayed level three if they're staying in your jungle. So there's really no incentive for them to stay. So if they run up, just let them start on it if they really want to. It puts them behind. But do not fight a fight you don't think you can win. They have the bard, they'll cause and all that. So I'm going to get and smite that because I'm only level 1. I'd rather get my second ability. W comes up. We Q inside of our W to get the lower cooldowns here. You can technically W after your Q, but for maximum effect, you generally W first. Cut out the big one. And we can do a 3 camp clear here. They hit the fastest level 3 possible. It really is just taking 3 camps on the same side of the map, so you're not having to do a big crossover. So for example, blue gromp into wolves would be fast or red krugs and raptors is relatively fast and since your jungle friend does aoe true damage as long as you're trying to kite the camp out you should still be getting through it relatively quickly so now at this point we could either look to gank mid or top because we're full hp nothing to gank nothing to gank so we're going to continue to clear bot lane looks gankable when you don't have gankable lanes you can look for for uh, something else, maybe an invade on the enemy jungler. I don't necessarily want to invade Hecarim though. I don't think we could necessarily kill him because he has phase rush and he'll get away, assuming he has high HP, which Hecarim farms pretty healthy. He might farm low mana, but his HP is not low. When it comes to your E against monsters, you can use it early because you're wanting to get it back as soon as possible, especially in your initial clears. But against champions, you typically save it to maximize its value as an execute especially when you know that uh, you have to make every bit of damage count because the cooldown is relatively long on it so here i smite it first and then i pinch it with the e so with a little leash we did a 320 there not too bad we finish full clear way before scuttle comes up and we're relatively healthy so rise we're about to gank put it on who we think we can kill bard you don't want to lay your mark too early typically so even though I put it on Bard, I need to focus their damage dealer first. Auto attack Q. I queued into the bush to take away her cooldowns. He's going to walk to that. Auto attack Q. I'm full stack conqueror here. Even if I didn't get help, he loses. He had minions helping him, which is why I was trying to move in the bushes as much as possible. I'm not sure where Hec Hecarim was because I wasn't paying attention, so I'm going to go ahead and reset. I'm assuming he's topside. I don't know if he's going to be over here at this point, and we're missing a lot of health, so we might as well back. And that's exactly what we're going to do. If you're ahead early on, get Berserks. Otherwise, go in for your first item, which is pretty much always Kraken Slayer. I'm ahead, so I'm going to go Berserks and then continue into Kraken Slayer. The biggest advantage of Tier 2 Boots on a ranged auto attack based jungler is you can pressure them down. Movement speed against champions is highly advantageous, plus the attack speed helps you with your clears as well. But if you're not ahead early on, you're better off forcing your first item rush and having a massive damage power spike instead of the mobility power spike so we see nico on the mini map Belkaz on the mini map they look gankable we take a look looks gankable looks Belkaz looks even more gankable he's missing health and he's stepping up he's being greedy a lot of laners will play up even if they have little to no chance of actually getting a kill once we get him behind her here now we'll hit her with a mark wqe into her she doesn't have boots so i think i should just chase it and I know which one's the real one because we had our E on it. Apple stack conquer here. If they want to fight, they're going to get devastated. I'll attack E. She turns because she knows she can't outrun. I have tier 2 boots. She has no boots. That's why tier 2 boots is good. If you're ganking, odds are they have to run from you because there's more of you than there are of them. Therefore, having the boots is uh, pretty nasty. 
down she goes we get our mark just don't lay your mark too early there are mind games you can do with it to trick people that's more of something you'll see in challenger or in pro play and uh, at this honestly iron through d1 you shouldn't even be thinking about playing mind games with your marks because constantly almost every minute of the game there's somebody on at least one team who's making a, a big mistake like here they're pushed up mf doesn't even have boots and they're shoved up super far do they have much kill potential honestly they do but still they're pushed they don't know where i am mf no boots and i'm kind of ahead my bot lane just back there and i'm gonna force to farm it's not a gank if it's a one verse two if i'm fighting two of them that's not really a gank it's just a 1v2 i'm gonna hold on to my mark here if you are gonna passively leave it on somebody you'd want to leave it on the enemy jungler that sucks but right now since i'm out to gank i don't want to do that she's gonna stay for plate and be greedy making sure this isn't warded oh this is bad i gotta get over the wall we're chilling gotta hop over again i want to get my e down i can't reach very well here she gets the double stun i don't like this fight anymore i lost too much health i didn't have the proper cooldowns or vision to really fight that these little walls are your best friends since i knew hecarim was in the area and bard was in the area i wouldn't have done that if i didn't have a little wall to play around because any thin or small wall you can hop over is a quick escape or chase down tool we'll push for pickaxe the goal is when you base is to spend as much gold as possible towards the item that you actually want so instead of buying new quiver and sitting on 500 gold instead we can spend more gold by getting pickaxe and picking up a long sword nine out of ten times that's your best option because generally spending more gold is better nico's looking very gankable try to it, it's hard especially if you play on mock screen but even if you are going to play heavily on mock screen is if you're paying close 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 attention to the minimap as much as you can whether that's once every second or once every four seconds you will find opportunities like right now we see Belkaz is under turret. Is he diveable? Yes, he is. He's super, super low. I can push center here. Nico not diveable, so I'm probably not going to play heavy for that. You shouldn't really look too much for your marks in the enemy jungle. That's a bit of a noob trap, and you get yourself killed a lot. Good pathing and good ganks is way more important than blind face checking a mark. Q into him, get him with the E. Gonna keep moving. It's okay to cancel an auto or to walk for a second if you know they're hitting you with a skill shot. So there we dodge his skill shots. What does she have? No boots, no boots, she can't get me. And she's fast, she's MF, but she can't get me, no boots. I'm gonna try and fight this. I hit her with an E early. I wanna slow her down for the Lux. She wasn't really able to land anything. At full stack conquer, kiting it from the back line, Q in. I still have my R. I Q'd out of her R a little bit. She's still able to land it. I do have flash here. Got her with an auto flash EQ. Down he goes. I can kill Hecarim here. He's being greedy for blue buff. I'm going to hug the wall this way so he doesn't see me. Or less likely to see me. He's likely to be right there. He's not going to expect me to. Oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and check real quick. Just to make sure. Plus, I have that plant. And now we can get our mark as well. I'm not going to smite it early to get, ex to get extra execute damage from my E. Because I don't want Hecarim to show up and steal it from me. Go ahead and check Vision here. He's super low. He should not have stayed. He has tier and boots. I have tier 2 boots and actual damage. He doesn't have damage or survivability here. So on Velikaz, I could try to mark him. Oh, is this warded? I'm not sure. It might be. The control word stopping this word from giving him vision. So if it is warded, this isn't the one that saw me. The key over the wall. Get him with the E. Down he goes. He ignited us. Velkosh should never take ignite. Long range backline mages outrange the range of actually igniting, which is why you don't see Ziggs, Velkosh, Lux take ignite generally. It's basically a noob trap or in extremely niche scenarios, but typically their play style isn't optimal for that. Gonna max our W second. I don't have time to put my mark on Bard because he's gonna die so fast. Go ahead and get, get down my R, try to get down some Conqueror stacks on this guy. And down he goes. We're able to get pretty much full stack Conqueror out of our R and not die there. 
I'm gonna keep walking. Then I was gonna hit him with an auto after someone else tanked because he was looking at me and I was the closest to him. Q inside of our W to get the lower cooldown. Put the next mark on Valkaz because he's been playing so overly aggressive. We do have a mark over here we can take safely. I did say you shouldn't focus too much on your neutral marks. Focus more on your champion marks, which is very true. But when you have one that's free, the enemies are already dead and you're super close to it, you might as well take it. And this is one of those situations. We're getting a bunch of mana back since we have jungle item and we're in the river or jungle area. This guy's pushed up. He's about to die. He had a panic queue there. We run him down with a boots advantage. I don't really want to take these last hits. After a successful gank as a jungler, you're supposed to push wave, but not necessarily take the last hits. You're just essentially sharing XP, making sure the enemies miss theirs. Q auto, auto WQ there, basically. WQ at the same time to maximize the cooldown refund on the Q. Hit him with an auto to get my heal. Also to say, hey, back off there. MF has tier 1 boots. She's moving 415 out of combat mode, moving 370. Kindred has really low base movement speed. I want this dragon. At the same time, I'm sitting on 3k gold to where if you look at gold spent, even people who are behind have as much gold spent as me because I have 3k in my pocket. Golden League is not valuable if it's in your pocket. It's only valuable if you have it spent. I do not really want to take dragon because of that. I'm actually going to reset. This next mark we could put, for example, on Nico if we did want to play mind games. Especially if she's being aggressive with our guy, try to force her off of him. It's one way to think about it. I would say with this type of build, you want Phantom Dancer next. Or even a uh, Black Cleaver can work wonders with this scrappy, stay alive forever type of kindred build. Conquer or Lethal Tempo leans heavier into on hit such as wits end and black cleaver if you're going to play f with uh press the attack a lot of the times it's just cracking into collector into ie super basic crit build we, we want a bit more survivability to maximize max out conquer stacks as extra ad i'm not going to bother smite there's no one here to contest oh it was warded they know i'm here now so MF just spawned. She's going to be right here, fast moving back to her base. They're probably going to figure I'm on their red buff right now. I think I could still kill MF though, especially if my E comes back up in time. She's going to come for the wave like all AD carries do when they're behind. They'll bull charge out for the wave and uh, get themselves killed. Oh, she went mid. Good for her. Oh, wait, no, that was Nico. Was it? No, it was her. Huh. Well, then we'll push it. This is a big wave, so... <laughs> She's kind of screwed if she doesn't come for it. And if she did come for it, she would have died. I'll attack Q. Get that big attack speed soak. He can't step up and do that. Q auto. He's dead. He's dead. I still have plenty of HP. I can pop R if I need to. They're probably coming for me right now. I got to move. There's too many people missing on the map and I'm missing so much HP. If you're in a situation where you know it's going to be a super close fight and you're not sure if you're going to win it, if you do have R, make sure you don't waste your E. You can get them down to zero. You can get them down to 10% HP when they're inside of your R. Your E's in execute. Put your E on them, auto them twice, and then right when your R ends, Q auto them again and they die. So... If you know it's going to be a close fight, do not waste your E. You only get to use it once per champion fight, essentially, because of the long cooldown on it. So you got to make the most out of that single use in a conflict. Put it on MF. I think she's here. She doesn't seem to be. I'm going to get some more marks. The marks are only so valuable, guys. If you're a zero mark kindred with dragon soul, four dragons plus soul against their zero dragons, that's more useful than a zero dragon kindred with 10 marks like the marks really don't matter with good pathing and good ganks the marks will come do not focus on the marks they will absolutely come they get, they're getting torn up so hard the jungle was uh quite the 
quite the lack of a better word the difference because Hecram couldn't find good ganks and oftentimes he was pathing or trying to gank where I already was which isn't good Hecram's a strong jungler but a ranged jungler like Kindred and Graves is going to kite the heck out of him since Hecram's melee and he doesn't have the best gap closer for killing a high shredder in the early game. Once he has his R, especially if he's ahead, it's different. But early on when he's running at you, he'll soak three to four autos before he touches you. And heck, I'm squishy early on <laughs> with, with tier and tier two boots and whatnot. I feel like they know I'm here almost. I'll attack Q. I walked past that. I'll attack Q. I have full stack conquer right now. I can step forward and kill this guy. Conqueror just faded. Oh, wow. My E on him. Auto, auto, Q, auto. Down he goes. Notice how we saved our E for that and we didn't spaz out and use it too soon because we wanted to do more damage to him for as long as we could. That was a super awkward situation there. I'm missing a lot of health. I already have the gold lead. There's no reason to risk dying here and a weird dive when I'm almost already dead. It's like someone could flash the wall, do something crazy. Might as well stay alive. Don't give them a thousand gold for one mistake or one limit test. We can get all of our back, all of our HP back from one or two camps anyways. So yeah, Kindred does have the full clear option. Like you guys saw this game, you can full clear and be done before Scuttle even spawns and you're basically full HP. That's something Kindred has never had since her release. Kindred has never been able to do that. She's lost too much HP. She struggled with Raptor, struggled with Krugs. But with the jungle changes, she can take red side just fine. As long as she has, I'd say red buff because your Q applies on hit effects. AOE shred them. Somebody died up here. This fight doesn't make sense. Dragon's actually coming up. I want to reset though for it. I'm resetting late. The rule of thumb is you don't want to reset any later than when Dragon's up in 35 seconds. So if you're starting recall later than that, you're probably doing it uh, a little on the late side. The idea here is to have a lot of attack speed off the Kraken and the Phantom Dancer to stack up our Conqueror as soon as possible. So even if they get on us fast, we can get Conquer absolutely full stacked while inside of our R come out and eat them alive. Most champions in the league don't take Conquer or Lethal Tempo. By default, if you have your Conquer or Lethal Tempo stacked, the enemies don't, they can't fight you. So those keystones are so strong. It's an extremely easy, soft rule to play by and limit test by and trade by. Great example is Darius. If, Dar if the Dar enemy Darius is low health, but he's full stack conqueror, full stack passive, do you really want to fight that? Probably not. Even if you have like double his HP at that point, he'll most likely one shot you. It's the reason why Darius is so good on low mid elo. People don't respect his stack conqueror, stack passive. WQ in. Renata kind of pulled him away. Q auto. Taking a lot of damage for it though. I'm going to pop right over and kill them all. Auto Q. Oh, that's bad. I take too many turret shots. <laughs> I did get barred, but it wasn't worth. I wanted to limit test over the wall. I knew MF was going to be there. I wasn't expecting Nico there at that exact moment. These are the type of limit tests you want to avoid when you have a thousand shot down gold. But this is a learning fun environment, so we might as well. But when you're in your rank game and you're trying to climb, don't do what I just did. There's no point. <laughs> There's no point of uh, risking it that hard because they just got a thousand gold, which is more than three kills worth of gold. Three kills is only 900. Shut down gold is a good concept. I think it just went too far. I think the highest it should go is if you kill someone who's like way out of control fed, you should get two kills worth of gold. It's like 600 instead of 300 rather than a thousand. Thousands nearly double, nearly double what two times a kill is. Wild. We're at 10 marks, which means we're getting a bunch of extra stats on our abilities. 
more attack speed for our Q after using it for four seconds. We're getting more damage off of our W on enchant on champions when, uh, or just in general against everything. The healthier it is, it does current health damage. And then our E is doing more missing health damage. Your W shreds healthy targets, your E shreds low targets. We are at 625 range. The average AD carry auto attack range is at 550. So the standard AD carry, like an MF or Lucian, we're gonna super out range. Caitlyn would still have more range than us at this point. QE, QE into him, I'm not gonna take that portal, it's foolish. I'd rather get Baron. I'll go ahead and WQ. Auto Q. Auto Q. Nice. I don't really want to fight here. I want to get my IE. This is a huge, huge, huge power spike. And at this point, they don't have any tanks. If they do have tanks, Lord Dominic regards your best percent based damage option. Percent based meaning even if they have 10 trillion health, 10 gazillion health. They are 1,000 stack Cho'Gath, etc. You can still kill them with like 10 auto attacks. It doesn't matter. The, the, what achieves that for 80 champions is Lord Dominic's regard and Bork. They both have percent base damage. Bork on its Mist Edge, Lord Dominic's on Giant Slayer. Put it on Hecarim. He's melee. You typically put it on melee champions when you're in the team fight stage of the game because you're more likely to kill them as they go in or try to get out. With range champions, since they can sit farther back, you're less likely to get that mark. It really, <laughs> like I said, the marks only matter so much, but it is a slight edge you can gain by putting it over on melees in a team fight, or the tanks in a team fight rather than their backline champs. I'm gonna hold on to my abilities here. Don't want to give away my hand. I wouldn't mind going in if someone could pop me and I just can't see anything here. So I'll sit back, use the teammate as a meat shield. Lux missed her attack. Auto, auto Q. I still have my Q. Down he goes. I'm gonna go ahead and R myself because that was getting sketchy as heck. I'm gonna Q back inside of my R there and get out of that situation. It's better to R too soon than too late on kindred especially if you have your e if you're Ring too soon then it's not a huge deal but if you've already used your e and then you are before you even finish it then yeah that's a huge issue because you're not really benefiting from the kill potential on the e if you're bringing them inside your r and that type of setup Wait, Ooh, nice yeah this guy's dead i have super long range i'll attack q Oh, I needed to get a kill. I didn't react around the Renata ability at all there. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I haven't played with many Renatas. But uh, yeah, I should have just gone balls deep. Whenever Renata puts that ability on you, it, I think it empowers you. And then if you get a kill or assist before it ticks down, you come back to life. Kind of like a Zillionar. Ended up taking a little bit too much damage. You don't have real life still yet. At this point, we would go for a Bork if they are tanky or a Bloodthirster since they're not because Bloodthirster gives 18% life still instead of 8. That is uh, close to triple. We'll go ahead and pick that up. Team got Dragon. We're playing for Drag Soul. Kindred is not a split pusher. Just like a uh, normal AD carry, split pushing is not what you want to do on her because there are a variety of bruiser split pushers that are gonna eat your lunch in a solo fight. Not a team fight, but a solo fight. You will lose against champions such as Fiora, or a high likelihood of losing against things like Fiora, Jax, uh, even a Shen if he's got gold, a Nasus. You would lose to something like a Kassadin or possibly a Zed if he's fed. But there's a variety of champions. because Realistically, Kindred is a mobile AD carry. It's ideal to have people in front of you to shoot and to block. She doesn't have any modifiers in her kit to give her more HP, armor, magic resist, or anything that rewards you for necessarily building those things either. They're starting to tighten up, play really safe. They've gotten 2,000 gold from killing me twice, so now they're really trying to come back into the game. 
I'm at 12 marks though, so it's not going to be easy for them. A 12 mark kindred is slightly absurd. I've had over 20 before, but 12 is definitely on the higher end. That means it's a high kill game, which it has been. He has one misstep. He dies instantly. Hey, Bard. I'm going to flash for it. I'll attack you. Get him with smite. You're dead. Goodbye. I have such long range. And that should be GG's. I can even R my minion here to keep him alive. Why shred turret? Pretty cool. I'll attack Q. And yeah, that's some Kindred. We'll take a look at damage dealt, damage taken. MF running out of base. Oh, she actually got the kill. I legit didn't get a crit for the last three autos there. <laughs> oh, man. Vilkoff stepping out. He's dead. I'm going to save my dash for when he throws his skill shot out, and down he goes. As long as you have your dash, even if they have a skill shot, just save your dash and they die. Let's look at damage dealt, damage taken. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we had the most in the game. Looking at damage taken, the most on our team, and for a runes high value. All in all, Kindred is an amazing hyper carry. You do want to practice your kiting skills and practice tool if you can to help you move comfortably between autos. Otherwise, targets will pretty much always get away from you because you're just not moving in between autos and Kindred has a low base movement speed. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.